what's up YouTube Jeremiah Hersey here welcome back to the next PL 300 test prep question today we're going to be talking about the advanced options inside of a SQL server connection now we've already talked about one of those features which is the command timeout but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into all of the advanced features or advanced options within inside of a SQL server connection so let's go ahead and get started in the Power BI desktop so here we are in the Power BI desktop and I have the SQL Server database connection pulled up. But what we're going to be discussing today is located with inside of the advanced options down below. In a previous video we talked about what a command timeout is but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that today. As well as what these check boxes mean include relationship columns, navigate using full hierarchy, and enable SQL Server failover support. So let's go ahead and discuss these in order. So the first one that we want to talk about here is the command timeout which we mentioned in a previous video. And so some of the things that you need to know about the command timeout is that the default is 10 minutes. So with the command timeout, once again, if the connection lasts longer than 10 minutes, then this is going to time out your SQL Server connection. Now, the maximum here is 60 minutes. So you can set this range. This is a optional parameter here for the command timeout. Essentially, it's going to time out your connection. If your SQL script or your database connection takes longer than 60 minutes, it is going to time out. But you have the option to set it anywhere between 10 minutes, which is the default and the maximum 60 minutes. Now, as we talked about in the previous video, you can also write a SQL script here. And so you can write your SQL statement in this box. And this allows you to basically import data from a database using that query language. So you can specify the columns, you can add where clauses, and it makes it really easy for pulling in the specific data that you want. But once again, in order to use a SQL statement, you are going to have to designate a database with inside of this SQL statement area. And notice that it also says that right here as well. This is optional, but it requires a database. So if you're going to be writing a SQL statement, you have to include the database inside of that database area. So as we kind of focus in on the lower section here, so what you'll see down here are three check boxes. And so we're going to talk about these a little bit more in depth. I didn't mention them in the previous video, but it's important for this question. So the first one is include relationship columns. This is checked by default. And what it does is it includes any columns that might have a relationship to other tables. So when this checkbox, and once again, this is always checked by default, this is going to include any columns that might have relationships to other tables. Now, if this is unchecked, then you're not going to see those columns. So as we've talked about key columns or relationship columns in other videos, so this allows to include any columns that might have relationships to other tables. If this is unchecked, you're not going to see those columns. The next checkbox is navigate using the full hierarchy. And so what this does is it displays a hierarchy of tables. So when it displays the hierarchy of tables inside the database that we're connecting to, so it's going to bring in all of the tables that it has the connection to with inside of the database. Now, if this is unchecked, like we see before, this is only going to display columns whose rows contain data. So this is an important piece of information here. So if unchecked, it only includes columns and rows that contain data. So very important to understand so if it's checked it's going to display a hierarchy of tables that has a connection to the database that you're connecting to if it's unchecked like it is now 
it is only going to include columns and rows that contain data. This last option here, enable SQL Server failover support, so essentially, if it's checked, then when a node in an Azure SQL failover group isn't available, Power Query moves from that node to another one when the failover occurs. Essentially, a node and a core are used interchangeably. Think of it as computing resources for Power BI. So with that, it will change your node or your computing resources if a failover occurs. If it's unchecked like it is now, then no failover is going to occur. So let's go ahead and take a look at our test prep question. So it says we're using Power BI Desktop to connect to an Azure SQL database. The connection is configured as shown in the following exhibit. So we have the server and the database name. We're gonna import this database and it says that we're going to include relationship columns. So notice that there is no timeout set. There is no SQL statement written either. And the navigate using full hierarchy and enable SQL server failover support are both unchecked. So the question says, use the drop down menu to select the answer choices that complete the statement based on the percentage graphic. So the default timeout for the connection from Power BI Desktop will be what? And so we talked about if the command timeout, which we see up here at the top, does not have any information in it. So it is left blank. That the default timeout is going to be what? And that correct answer will be 10 minutes. 10 minutes is the default timeout if there is no command timeout specified with inside of that SQL Server connection. Then it says the navigator, which is what displays the information, will display what? So as we look at our secondary options down here at the bottom, so it's going to include relationship columns, so it's going to include any columns that might have relationships to other tables, but the navigate using full hierarchy is unchecked. And so we talked about if this is unchecked, then this is only going to display items with columns and rows with data. So because this is unchecked, it is only going to display items with columns and rows with data. And so because of that, our correct answer should be the second one, only the tables that contain data. So because this navigate using full hierarchy is unchecked, this is only going to display items with columns and rows with data. So that is the correct answer. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.